You're listening to the Cayley United Podcast, proud partner of Football Nation Radio. Hello, Daniel Teo. Welcome to the Cayley United Podcast. Matthew Bins here in the KLU Virtual Outpost this week. Joining me, a man who is barred from the Preston North End online fan forums, undoubtedly for his notoriously calm, measured takes and his unrelenting insistence on them swooping in for Che Kang and Kim Chinook before the window shuts. It's Paul Lee, everyone. Hello there. How did you know that? <laughs> <laughs> I saw, well, I, I saw the Preston result first, and then uh, I oh, saw God. your tweets that followed, and then uh, there was just one ominous one that just read. I'm blocked from the forums, and I thought, oh, I, don't, I, can, I, I can put I the pieces to, together here. I used to post on that forum all day, every day, basically, at work, but I haven't been on it much recently, but I see, I don't know, maybe I'm, I'm a bit of a sadist, but I tend to enjoy it more when we've lost, you know what I mean? You, you, you yeah. sort of go on there and read the rants and, and the post-mortem and stuff, so I went on there to sort of see what was being said about the, the whole debacle, as we're now going to call it. And um, yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't log in. I forgot password. Couldn't couldn't remember my password. And then my email address wasn't the right one. I was like, oh, this is a joke. So, but yeah, I tell you what, if the Wookie would do all right, I think in the championship. Yeah, I think he could. Uh, I mean, he could go there easily. He's, he's looking. He's free agent. Uh, we're going to get to that I, soon. And, I'm not uh, sure. We could, I'm not sure we could afford him though. To be honest, <laughs> North End not exactly uh, paying the big bucks in the championship. So. <laughs> Maybe when he's a bit older, thirty-eight, get him on a six-month deal or something. Yeah. And, uh, well, yeah. Uh, how was your weekend, Paul? Besides uh, the Preston result, it was all right. It was very good up until that point. Actually, yeah, it was a very good weekend. I went to a very Instagrammable cafe up near Namyangju. Oh, you didn't recommend it. Yeah, uh, Lars Veldwijk this time having brunch. Not this time. No, if it was a brunch cafe, then I'm, I was almost certainly going to going to be there. But no, not this time. It was nice. Yeah, I do like that that sort of northern section of the Han River. Mm, you know, it's, yeah. it's just very nice. Lots of little uh, coffee shops and restaurants overlooking the river. It's nice. Mm, how, nice. how was yours then? Uh, I spent most of mine in uh, recovery. I, I've had uh, had the uh, the the uh, vaccine my second vaccine shot uh, at the end of the week and uh, yeah, just a bit of a headache. I'd rather have the headache than um, COVID, obviously. Uh, but yeah, so yeah. spent most of it recovering. Then I had an annual mandatory health check for work yesterday. So I've, I've been punctured more than a Buchan backline ball. It's, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but just like Buchan um, this weekend, at least, I've come out smiling. Um, hey! So, uh, yeah, fully recommend it for anyone still on the fence about that. But, yes, speaking of the weekend, let's jump right in. We actually had a full docket of games, finally, across both divisions. Uh, For the first time in what feels like ages, Paul. Um, So we felt it only right to talk about it, both K1 and K2. And then later, we're going to hear from Dear John Hanna Citizens Park in Hock before then an interview with uh, Busan Eye Park's Ryan Edwards, uh, Ryan sat down with our Busan columnist Edo One for a chat. So uh, looking forward to that. That should be quite interesting. First, though, Paul, uh, your day job is talking about the news. So uh, why give up a habit? Uh, <laughs> let's look ahead to Korean football and what has been going on over the last few days. Well, the Wookiee has left China. So has Che Kang Yi. And Kim Min Jae. I mean, is that a coincidence? No Kim Min Jae. No, no, sorry, no, no Wookie, no party. It, it seems. <laughs> yeah, it's the uh, the Chinese Super League is uh, clearly losing its real stars now. Forget forget the other ones that have left the win left before. We're talking not Kim Oscar Min-Jae. and Hulk. No, the Wookie is is the headline act here, <laughs> definitely. But yeah, he's he, they both left Shanghai Shenhua. So interesting to see where they'll end up. I'm not. I mean. Obviously, they can't return to K-League right now because the window's closed here. But yeah. um, maybe in the sort of uh, after a stint in the Middle East, that's, I suspect that might be where they would end up. Mm-hmm. I would love to see both of them back in the K-League. And to be honest with you, it sounds a little bit audacious, but FC Seoul should have a pop at Che Kang Hee oh, in the winter. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Park Park will, I'm pretty sure Park, I'm, well, obviously I, can't, I can't be certain, but I suspect Park Jin Sok will not be the manager of FC Seoul for a great period of time. And given that they are at the wrong end of the table, it's probably only a matter of time before they look for other options, let's just say. I mean, Che Kang-hee, obviously, he is synonymous with John Book, but maybe if Kim Chang-shik is, is uh, still proving to be a little bit 
having some teething problems, you could say, then mm -hmm. they might bring him back in there. Yeah, it's, I mean, that's what every... As soon as it was announced, that was the, the messages that came through my phone were, is he coming back to John Book? And I think John Book have tried to move away from it, after, but he would be welcome back in a heartbeat. Obviously, he's, he's loved there, but I, I mean, it, I hate it because it's kind of not really fair on Kim sang -shik. Kim sang -shik was the assistant manager to Jay Kangi, and I don't think he'd be willing to drop down back into that assistant role and so yeah a bit of a difficult one but I, I would imagine taking you won't be out of uh, football for too long I'm sure there'll be plenty of suitors over this uh, part of the world and I've, I've read that Kim Shinook uh, is either interested in a move to the Middle East or the J League so it'll be whichever one of those leagues come in for him I could do all right in the J League I think but he, probably given his wages the salary I'd imagine Middle East is a more likely destination but as the, the other former John Book players uh, playing in China to go. The Kim Min Jae saga looks like it's coming to a close. He is in Turkey. Uh, speaking with Fenerbahce. Yes. Um, I mean, you know, he got linked to Watford in the English Premier League at the time before he eventually moved to Beijing Guan. And it's been, I think, even, well, certainly up until that point, And then ever since then, there's been constant talk about a top, you know, a, a top European club coming in for him. He's been linked to PSV, Porto, uh, the list goes on. I, I've forgotten some of them, but he's been linked to sort of almost every Tottenham as well was one of them. He's been linked to a lot of big clubs and he's got a move to the Turkish Super League. So I think that's a, you know, a huge club like Fenerbahce. We'll see how he, how he does there. And we know it's happening because he, he, he has been in Turkey for a medical and whatnot. He's been photographed over there. Um, so we'll see. I mean, obviously they are still just about in pre-season, the end of pre-season in, in Turkey. Um, but they have the Europa League playoff Thursday the 19th. The second leg is a 26. Maybe involved in the, in the second mm. leg if that goes through. The first game of the new league season isn't until... Well, actually, that's coming up this weekend. So that might be too early. But uh, hopefully, we'll finally see Kim and Jay in Europe. So I see, as we talked about last week, I spoke to Dayan. Mm -hmm. uh, with interview with sort of his toughest opponents and stuff like that in the Champions League, he mentioned Kim and Jay specifically as being the best defender that he's come across in the ACL and in K League, uh, and he said it's just a matter of time before we see Kim and Jay in a big league in Europe. So finally, it, it looks like it's ninety nine percent certain that he will be. So uh, good luck to him. Yeah, definitely. And uh, one last bit of trans, just kind of linking onto that Kim Min Jae thing. The manager of Fenerbahce is Vita Pereira. He was actually the manager of Shanghai SIPG, so he would have seen Kim Min Jae in the flesh uh, playing for Beijing Guan. Uh, but there's also rumours, it's nothing confirmed yet, but apparently there is interest in signing Ricardo Lopez as well to Fenerbahce. So that could be a nice John Book link up if that goes through. They're all rumours at present, but it does seem to be an exodus at, in China at the moment, mainly due to the way they are handling their World Cup qualifiers constantly start, uh, starting, stopping the league and uh, the Chinese FA prioritising their national team over the league. But good for uh, these Korean players who've been looking to move away and uh, wish them all the best. Let's see. We'll see how Indeed, that develops. Yeah. But on to the, uh, what everybody wants to talk about, the K-League 2. Yes, we're going to start with the headline act because had all five games this weekend and uh, a few interesting results, a few controversial decisions. So uh, we're going to go down one by one. And uh, the first one on my list is Seoul Eland 1, Chungnam Asan 3. Chungnam Asan winning again, Paul. Yes, they bounced back from that loss away to Dejon, picked up a, a very impressive win away to Seoul Eland, despite going a goal down because Kim In Song, who's uh, just joined Seoul Eland, that was his mm -hmm. first goal for them after the second minute. But then a fight back. It, Kim in Gyun scored a brace and then Alexandra with a penalty. So you have to worry about Seoul Eland. Mm. Fans, understandably, very frustrated. Is Chung Jung Young the right man after all? Yeah, it's an interesting um, interesting debate to have because I was having a look at the stats. And now, it, we should mention that there was a red card in, in the weekend's match. Igoro getting the uh, red card uh, for a stamp after a view of our review. It looked a little bit harsh, if I'm being honest, but it was straight red, so he'll be banned for the next couple of matches. But yeah, I believe it is... Solely lands. They've only had one win in the last fourteen matches. That is, that is. Oh, not that's good including enough, the yeah. FA Cup. 
but so 13 yeah. league matches. Um, yeah, I think it's right time That's we probably point. put Chung, Chung Jong Young under the microscope, really. They haven't really, they had a few outbounds in the winter that I don't think they really replaced. Uh, they obviously they lost Richard Zakatu Pasu, uh, they've replaced him with uh, Benegas, who's not been able to replicate the goal scoring uh, feats that. Uh, Sakata managed, but there was also um, some of their other signings haven't quite paid off. Uh, William Barbio from Buchan. I, I mean, I, I didn't think that was going to be <laughs> that good of a move anyway. Uh, he, yeah, he did all right at times at Buchan last season, but yeah, he's he's not really showed up. Yeah, um, he did. He did all right. It wasn't really of the players within Kaylee. You wouldn't think, oh, we definitely need to have him. You know what I mean? It was just a bit yeah, of a strange one that. Exactly, and. Leandro hasn't been as prolific as he was last season. He's still been good. He's probably one of the few players that's still holding it together for them and keeping them, well, the ninth, <laughs> but they, keeping them within a, a few points of going further. But yeah, I, I think poor recruitment last winter. Kim In Sung was a good transfer in in the summer. Hopefully, it looks like on the very limited amount of evidence being able to see. But we know, obviously, we know him from Ulsan. He, he should be able to work his magic in the K League too. But you also look at the strikers that brought in Hani Kwan from Suwon. And again, that's one where we look at it going, we probably at the time thought, oh, maybe he could do a job in K League too. But to be honest, when we think about it, he wasn't really doing the job at Suwon Blue Wings. And perhaps we should just be more critical when these players drop down in a division. He's not done it at all. He scored two goals um, in his 16 appearances for uh, Seoul Elan this season. Yeah, just... It's been a bad wave of recruitment. I, I don't I think the team doesn't look solid defensively and they just can't score. OK, I've just said they're not solid defensively. They're not the second best defensive record in the league, but they've also got the second fewest goals scored in the league. And when you're not scoring those goals, you can easily lose just by a narrow margin because there's no threat. There's no threat for these opposition defences. Yeah, about Elan, I did, yeah, it's, it's just... I think we're going to have to sort of see what Michael Redman says about, about uh, what's been going on there. Obviously, he'll have something upon K-League United, the, the weekend's games and whatnot, to sort of see exactly what is, is going wrong. I think he's obviously uh, very frustrated with, with with how things are going there. So we'll have to see what he says. Uh, moving on, the weekend, there was also FC Anya 1, Busan Eye Park 1. And this also was uh, quite an eventful game. And Young Jun scoring, opening the scoring uh, before Jonathan Moyer getting the equaliser. But there was more to it than that, wasn't there, Paul? Yeah, there was. There was obviously a, a bit of a strange double booking and sending off uh, for Edwards, who's actually going to be uh, you know, on our podcast a little bit later. Um, but yeah, th- th- this was a, a game that Busan really needed to win. They they are now five points off the top four behind Anyang, actually, who are in fourth. Nine points away from the top as well. So you'd have to think now, unless there's some really, really strong turnaround and they can put together a good run of wins, consistent run of a few wins, then you'd have to say that automatic promotion is is out of their grasp now. The problem with Busan is that they've scored as many as they've conceded, 33 each. And they've only and Buchon have conceded 35. That's the most in the division. So you can see what's happened there. I thought they'd be a little bit better defensively because obviously they've got Valentinos. He has had some injury problems uh, and he hasn't been playing as perhaps as much as he would have liked to or certainly the manager would have wanted him to be there because obviously he's, he is very experienced and a good player in K-League 2 in particular. So yeah, I mean, but then fair play to Anyang for coming back. They obviously scored quite late on in the 82nd minute. Moyer again, he's, he's, he's proven to be that sort of elusive foreign striker that, that Anyang haven't really been able to sort of find since um, yes. Wesley Alex a few years ago. So it looks like he's a real deal. Anyang are one of four or five teams that they say they want to win the K-League 2 title, but no one seems to want it enough when they get to the top of the top of the table. So, mm-hmm. But on the face of it, a one-all draw against Busan and likewise for Busan, a one-all draw against Anyang, you would probably would have taken that. Yeah, you would have. And there were moments of controversy in this match as well as there were in the other one. Uh, Anyang, uh, Busan actually missed a penalty and Byung Jun firing wide, not even on target. But there was some... Uh, whether the penalty should have been awarded in the first place really should have come into question. It was very soft. Anyang Spek Dong Yu was a judge to have uh, pulled down the attacking Busan player. But there was also a goal disallowed, late drama, uh, Drozdek scoring for Busan uh, again disallowed because 
there's a foul with An Byung Jun on An Yang's Kim Hyung Jin in the box. Uh, so yeah, it did uh, lead to flared tempers at the end, or well, what looked like flared tempers anyway. Uh, manager Perez he was booked as he was deemed to have abused the official. Perez denied it strongly in the press conference. But it looks like he will not be on the sidelines for Gyeongnam next weekend. Anyway, moving on. A less dramatic match. Uh, Kim Chon, Sangmu, nil. Gyeongnam FC, nil. The curse of first well, in K-League 2, Paul? Certainly seems like it because this this draw for Kim Chon has, it, well, it gifted the chance for John Nam or Dead John to take advantage mm-hmm. and try and, uh, you know, make some ground, perhaps even go top. Neither could, as we'll get to in a little bit there. But Kim Chon, they are starting to come good. Gongnam at home, who aren't having the best of season, you would have thought they would have come out on top in that one. But yeah, it wasn't wasn't a particularly eventful game, really. Two teams that you would expect better of, especially Kim Chon. Yeah, indeed. Uh, one dramatic match, though, was Butron FC 1995 4, Anson Green is 3. Seven goal thriller, perhaps not quite that, but certainly eventful. Some very cheeky free kicks in this one, Paul. Yes, the, so the, the scoring got underway in the 15th minute by Han Ji Ho. It was a free kick from sort of to the right outside the area, and he he basically just squeezed it in the near in between the near post and the wall. The keeper flat footed, mm-hmm. didn't know what was going on. Um, Han Ji Ho was actually very influential throughout the, yeah. this game for, for various reasons. Um, but Buchan took the, they made it 2 0. A penalty mm-hmm. from Brazilian forward Chris Lan on the 44th minute. Then, just before half time, Guk Te Jong scored. Uh, Han Ji Ho won the free kick. Keeper had an absolute nightmare with this. You have to do better than that. And then it all went ballistic in the second half. So, after the after half time, a penalty was awarded to Ansan. And then Kim Nyun Do, he put it away. And Aznari Mankulan won the penalty. And you think, okay, game on here. But no, then Park Chang Jun scored for Buchon. On 65 minutes with his seventh goal of, of the season, by the way. He's never scored more than two goals before. This is his first season at Buchon. Then Kim Nundo, of course, used to be a Buchon player. He scored in the 72nd minute. Good finish from just outside the box. Then in the 85th minute, they got another penalty. So this is the third of the game. Second for Ansan. He had his penalty saved where he scored the rebound. And to be honest, the goalkeeper, he saved it and was just sort of like almost lying there admiring his work. He didn't didn't get up Hmm. fast enough to try and anticipate the rebound. He didn't push the ball away and outside and away from danger. It came back in back into the box for Kim Nundo to sort of put that away. So 4-3 with... uh, Five minutes left, you think, well, that's done, isn't it? No, no, no. We weren't done then. The goalkeeper, John Jong Hyok, he gets a red card on the 90th minute. Well, it was a second yellow for time wasting. Yes. <laughs> so well, he was bemused. Um, mm-hmm. And you would think, I don't know, it was a very brave thing to do for the ref to send off the keeper for a second mm-hmm. yellow. So then Han Ji Ho went in goal. He took a goal kick. And then he was forced into a save. He made a bit. It was a very, um, very evidently an outfield player playing in goal kind of save. Just kind of like yeah. beat it away. That was in the 98th minute. And this is bearing in mind that, that, that there was six minutes of time added on. Very eventful game. And if you're Kim Nundo, you know, you've, you've scored a hat trick away mm-hmm. from home against your former team. And you're still on the losing side. Fuming. Indeed. It's trouble at Ansan at the moment. They had that promising start and it's they seem to... Uh have lost a bit of their edge. There, We have got a longer editorial piece focusing exactly on that coming out from our Ansan columnist, Mike Brandon. So I'd uh, keep an eye out for that. That'll be hitting hitting shelves. That'll be hitting the site in the uh, in the next couple <laughs> of days. Uh, perhaps out by the time you listen to this podcast. And anyway, we should really finish with what the, the headline act of K2 <laughs> here. Uh, it, the Battle of the Titans. John Nam Dragons, Dejan John Hannah Citizen. Paul, was it everything you were hoping it would be? It was turgid. It was awful. It was an awful game of football. Shooting from both sides was absolutely horrendous. It was just neither side seemed to be able to find the target. Shots were going way over. Um, the commentators were saying home run every time the in every st- for for certain shots going straight into the bleachers, if you want to call it that. Um, it was it was poor. Um, neither side deserved to win it really, but. In terms of glass half full for Dejon, a clean sheet, they've had a similar problem to Busan, is that they've conceded the same amount of goals as they've scored. That's at 31. One of only two teams to have zero goal difference. 
And their goalkeeper, the young goalkeeper, Eden So, back to back clean sheets for him. He's come in and he's now keeping Kim Dong Jun on, on the bench. Kim Dong Jun, he got taken out of the team after the, the loss to Seoul Elan. The, the players were heavily criticized for their attitude. The, um, the lead ultra, or the if you call it in Korean, the uh, the call leader, the guy he was, you know, got the, got the megaphone in the stands. He was he was shouting at the players, and they were stood there listening. This is after the Elan game a few months ago, mm-hmm. and they the players looked beaten emotionally. And then Kim Dong Jun put some on his Instagram story that was basically apologizing and, and sort of vowing to do better. He hasn't played since. He was on the wasn't even in the squad for the last couple of games. He came back this time around. But also I think it, it's probably worth mentioning that Chagi Sok, the goalkeeper who used to play for Bucheon, he passed away a, a, a few, well, I think it was last month. He had um, a terminal illness and passed away. He was very close to Kim Dong Jun. Uh, it was a bit of a, a mentor for him. And I think that maybe has affected his his sort of mental state as he would as you would expect, mm. but in terms of Eden Sol, it's back to back clean sheets, and he he was very, he's, he's he's shown a lot of maturity. If it wasn't for him, John maybe we could have won this game. He wasn't really tested in terms of worldies, in terms of saves in that regard. But uh, when he was called upon, he was very very confident, very calm, and uh, it was um yeah it was a. A way to John Am, a decent result to get a point and a, a clean sheet. Sitters are now unbeaten in four with three wins, but they, they didn't have Massa or Ekon Schick, who they definitely missed. But uh, yeah, it still bodes well. They are still only three points off Kim Chon at the top. But somebody who featured in that game was Pak In Hyok. He is Dejon's leading goal scorer. And uh, it's what we call a quick word, because it's not really a full interview, but a quick word with him. Uh, let's see what he had to say. All right, Dejon Hanna Citizen are firmly in the hunt for automatic promotion from K League 2 this season. Leading the team's goal scoring charts is forward Pagin Yok, who currently in his fourth season with the club. He has six goals to his name so far from 13 starts. Pagin Yok, welcome to the K League United podcast. Thank you very much for joining us. First of all, how would you assess your own start to the season personally? If I was to give myself a score, then maybe 50. That's because there have been a lot of goals that I should have scored, which I didn't. If in future I could feel that part in, then I should be able to give myself another 50 points. Okay, what's the atmosphere like in the squad at the moment? Together, over the same period of time, the players have worked hard in training and have been able to rely on each other and so have built up a good report. Plus, at the moment, with this winning run we're on, the atmosphere can't not be good. How does that compare to previous seasons, do you think? I think there has been a positive effect because with us all working hard, we have looked after each other and there has been a good synergy on the pitch. All right, final question. What are your own targets for the rest of this current campaign? The team's goal is to win automatic promotion, and so I think personal achievements will follow naturally if we are all doing everything we can to make sure we do win promotion. I'll do my best. All right, that was Park in Yok of Dejon Hana Citizen. Keep your eyes peeled on K League United Patreon and K League Twitter for video versions of that interview. And also, written versions are coming soon to KLeagueUnited.com and to KLeague.com. FNR is a revolutionary football dedicated digital platform, the first of its kind in Australia. It provides a 24 7 live online radio platform experience, podcast hub, and acts as a content provider for TV, radio, and digital. Having reached millions of listeners and football fans since launching, FNR is accessible worldwide via its website or app, providing a platform to discuss, debate, and celebrate the world game. We are your voice of football, FNR Football Nation Radio. Welcome back to the K-League United podcast. I'm Matthew Vins and I'm joined by Paul Neat. Hello there. Before the break, we were talking about K-League 2 and you also heard from Park in Hyuk. Uh, now we are going to... Well, we're going to be quiet for a little bit, Paul, because uh, we have an interview with Ryan Edwards. Rather, our Busan columnist, Ido One, sat down with Ryan Edwards for quite a lengthy interview. The full interview is going to be out next week on our YouTube channel. But here are here's a 15-minute snippet of uh, what they talked about. So... 
it's one and a half months since you arrived here, right? Including the self-isolating or quarantine periods. Then what is your first impression about the city and the club? Yeah, I um, honestly had, um, I researched a little bit of, of Busan as a city before I arrived and what you research um, is better in, in person. Mm-hmm. So the experience so far has been like, I'm really happy um, for, for me um, to be able to see mountains and the ocean um, is fantastic. I think it's very nice to have the nature um, uh, here in Busan. It's, you almost get the best of, best of everything in this city. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the food is incredible. The people have been really welcoming and warm. Um, so I'm super happy and, and grateful. My wife is here now. She's finished her quarantine as well. And we have a small dog. So um, they feel the same way and they're really happy. Um, and then uh, going into football, the, everyone from the office to the, to the kitchen staff to my, t- my new teammates, Korean teammates and foreign teammates, everyone's been really warm and welcoming. And I feel like, yeah, I've been here one month and a half, but I already feel like I'm not a new player. I feel like um, I've been here a long time. So I think that's a real credit to, to Busan as a city and Busan I Park as a football club. Like I said before, it's one and a half months since you arrived here, like including self-isolating such as quarantine. And most foreign players that come to K-League before believe that there is a good quality in the division. But due to the high intensity of the matches, it can be difficult to show your full range of skills on the pitch. Uh, how are you adapting your playing style to be more effective in this environment? Yeah, I think one thing that the, the club has done really well when I was in quarantine, I was able to have some one-on-one Zoom meetings with the technical staff for me to understand um, how the team wants to play. So I got to watch a lot of footage and do some, some football study myself. Mm-hmm. And I knew I was arriving to Busan quite early, so I watched five, six, seven games um, from, from Europe. So oh, okay. It got, got me to become familiar with the style from, from opposition and, and my current team. So um, I'm, I'm happy with, with how the level is and the, the tempo and the intensity. I think it, it suits my style of play. I think hopefully the fans can see so far in my performances that I'm a high intensity type of player. Um, and so it's, it's been, it's been good. I don't feel like I've had a a lot of adapting to do. Of course, I want to help the team more and more contribution, um, for us to get better results and me to help the team. If, if uh, I can contribute with more assists and goals, then of course that, that is, that is good, but I want to help the team as much as possible. So coming from Scotland and England, the, the tempo and intensity is, is high. So coming here. Is, is a good level of adaptation for me. Um, I guess the most uh, difficult thing, especially in my first game, was, was the weather. Because, uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I experienced cold temperatures in England, so to get used to that humidity and, and heat was, was probably the most challenging rather than uh, the intensity of the game. I want to ask you one thing about your experience, such as experience, okay? I know you're a foreign player and you to decide but even at the 27 year old, you are one of the most experienced player in this young squad. Do you relish this opportunity? Like, or does it put any pressure on you? I, I relish it, definitely, yes. Um, I, it, throughout my career, I've always um, been drawn to being a person that wants to help the team and be a leader and, show, and lead by example, whether that's through speaking or through my performances or the way I train. I want to have a positive effect on the group of players. Um, and that was one of the main reasons why I was attracted to Busan I Park was this project of a long-term picture for Busan. I, I want to not be one foreign player that comes for a short period and then leaves. I want to, I, want, I feel like I, I want to stay here for a long time and help, help the team's project. I know we're in K2, but Busan is a team that deserves to be in K1. We've got some very good players and I want to use, yeah, I'm 27, I'm still young, I want to learn and become better, but I want to use my experience that I've had so far in my career to help, to help um, the young players in the squad.
for, for one for us to push for promotion and to hopefully give them some advice and and bits of information that can help them because I believe that there's some players in in our squad that could um, have very good careers, good potential, and they could potentially go play in, in Europe. I, me personally, I, I do believe this. Mm, really, it's the most wonderful like reply to the supporters like me. Like, thank you, Ryan. And about I uh, about the study, like you said, studied about three or four times in this interview. So I want to ask you one question or two questions about your study. Okay, mm-hmm. so. I've seen your profile before, and you successfully studied for a UFR B license in Scotland. And whilst you study psychology at the Manchester University of Manchester, right? Correct. And what's the reason that makes you the player that study hard? Well, I, well, I feel one football is a very short career, and now I'm more experienced. And it's important to. Have something that you yeah, you can focus on outside of football to prepare yourself for one after football. But I also equally think it helps um, your performances on the on the pitch as well. Um, the UEFA B license I did in Scotland um, is something that I'm interested in. Maybe the coaching side. I'm not sure if I want to become a coach or not. <laughs> I'm not sure yet. But to to learn about that insight of the game was is important for me. And it's a good good level of a license to see if I want to take the UEFA A towards the end UEFA of my Pro. career. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I study psychology. It's it's an area of that I have a massive pa- passion about. Um, I feel like psychology is is getting more um, more involved in sport as well, and especially football. And mm-hmm. I think that, for example, in England and Scotland, or even in K1, K2, what dif- differentiates um, the difference between maybe winning and losing a game is is mentality and your mind. When everything is performance and tactics are, are matched up and equal, it's it's the players or the team that has the stronger mentality that can push through, and and that's a massive pa- passion of mine to to try learn about, read the research about it, and how can I make myself a better person and, and have better routines and um, all those little one percents. How can I sleep better? How can I think better? How can I work better for me to have a better performance? And also, like you said about your experience at Burton Albion before, uh, before. so what are the key differences in day-to-day management style of between Paris and Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank? Like, yeah, it's a great Your question. manager at Burton, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, I'm really enjoying working under um, the manager Ricardo Perez, and I love my time working with Jimmy Hazelbank. I think one, they're both uh, two very good managers. I think tactically, they're two of the best in the world that mm-hmm. I've worked. With, or, or say the world because I've worked with everyone in the world, but <laughs> that I that I've worked with. Um, so, yeah, the manager is very very good tactically and he knows his football is very intelligent um so far i feel really uh warm and welcome with the current manager i think he's um he's been really good at his man management skills with communicating with the korean players and the foreign players there's a good togetherness there um the style on the training pitch i, I find quite similar um i'm not sure whether the two of them have done their coaching badges um mm. But what Jimmy Hasselbank did at Burton was quite remarkable and how we got our team to turn around our performances and we did a lot of um, video analysis and tactical training sessions on how we want to want to play and how we want to stop teams playing. And we do some similar work here with, with the current manager where they, we do a lot of video sessions um, so we get to see the bird's eye view of how we want to play, how we should stop teams playing. And then we go do the work on the training pitch. Um, and it's really repetitive and it makes us think um, think a lot of how we should be doing our jobs. And I think that both have been very effective. Mm. Oh, and this question is from Jack Ar- Arkrell. So thank you, Jack. And <laughs> uh, about, let's keep on about some saying about some Paris, uh, say about Paris, recall the Paris. Uh, many players have praised the training method of recall the Paris, a coach has that 
a lot of experience coaching in many countries, such as Portugal or Greece, Greek or Brazil, then you yourself have 10 years of experience as a football player, mainly in the UK. So in your opinion, what's the difference between training in Britain and in Busan? The weather. <laughs> <laughs> the weather. <laughs> um, I say I've, I've been quite fortunate to work with really um, innovative, up and coming managers, young managers that are learning themselves and, and want to improve. So they always are changing and adapting. It's the same here with, with the current manager. Um, it's, it's the same kind of. It's the same kind of life routine. You know, we're training at the same times that I would in, in England and Scotland, uh, training for the same length of time, sometimes an hour and a half training session, sometimes um, a two hour training session, depending on the information and what you want to get out of that in that day. Um, we do some, some gym, gym training sessions, which mm -hmm. didn't happen so much in England because the schedule was repetitive games, Saturday game, Tuesday game. Saturday game mm -hmm. so there weren't so much gym sessions but the level of um, strength and conditioning and uh, gym sessions have been of equal quality um, equal information which has been good um, what I like here in Busan is um, the current managers incorporating more um, new ways of how to get the best out of us so he we do weekly meditation um, weekly yoga Mm. Um, which I'm, I'm a fan of. Um, I've been doing this for three or four years myself in my own environment. Oh, really? Um, which I find yoga for one um, keeps you more calm. It, it, it helps you strengthen your muscles, strengthen your core, lengthens your muscles to prevent injury. Um, Meditation is great to, to keep you present, keep you calm for um, if you do this small habit every single day, it'll help you on a training pitch to be more in we want to say to be in flow, to be not think about anything else but your own job. Um, so incorporating that in the team environment is the first I've seen in, in a club, in a football club, which I know that I think basketball um, in, in America do it. Um, so I think football is slowly catching up to these new ways of, of coaching. So there's, that's a small difference there, but generally um, the football stuff is, is quite similar. Mm. Next question is, what changes, uh, what changes have you made to your game in moving to Cayley? Yeah, it's, good. it's a good question. I found in, in my time in Scotland and England, um, I played more, more often than not in an attacking midfield position. And I was known, in, or I was, what was asked for me was, to press really high on the pitch. We liked high intensity pressing. Um, and I would do a lot of that in the game um, for us to retain the ball. And then we continue attacking quite high up the pitch. Um, in England, the style of football is different to the K League where it's more direct football, more long balls and second ball game where you have to um, not so much worry about the slow build up from defense to attack. It's more in your attacking half and more of like a battle and a fight. So coming to Korea was one main reason why I wanted to experience something new for myself was to learn a new style of football or relearn a new style of football because when I grew up in Australia um, with almost like a Dutch system, we learned how to play this style of football, passing football, progressive attacking football. So to come play for a Portuguese coach, a European manager in a, in a really good football team, really excited me so I, what I've noticed so far in my games is that I'm relearning a, a new style where I can get more on the ball and make more passes rather than worrying about not worrying about thinking differently about how the long ball or the second ball game while continuing to do my pressing and continuing to get the second ball I was now able to um, maybe scan a little bit more um, receive the ball um, with, with a pass rather than a long ball um, and I find the way the manager has set up that. So, for example, the last few games has been um, Domagoy, Jong-in and Byung-jun. 
the, pre- the high press has been really good where before I was the one doing that in England. So now I can oh, really? focus more of my midfield duties. So there's some small differences, which I'm happy to, to be doing. Thank you, Ryan. And I really hope you stay long as possible as you can with the great team Busan Eye Park. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Hopefully mm. it all works out. Fans, we want to hear from you. You're encouraged to email klu at info at kleagueunited.com or tweet at kleagueunited with any questions, comments or reactions. Or follow us on Facebook to ask directly during one of our live shows. Welcome back to the K-League United podcast. I'm Matthew Bins and I'm joined by Paul Neat. Yes, hello there. And uh, yeah, before the break, that was our very own Ido one sitting down and talking to Ryan Edwards from Busan Eye Park. Very interesting interview. Um, as we said, keep an eye out on our website. There will be the full length interview for that, as well as transcripts on kleague.com and kleague United, including some of your questions from Twitter. Anyway, moving on, going up a division, we're going to look at K-League 1 with its first full schedule in quite a while. And, uh, well, to start the weekend off, it was the reigning champions, John Book Hyundai Motors, and they played host to uh, Daegu FC in, in a match was actually third versus second. It finished in John Book's favour, 2-1. And uh, the match saw Min Min make his return to John Ju. He had played a few days prior in the week off the bench, uh, but he made his first start since returning from Kim Chun Sangmu. Also saw Song Min Kyu make his debut and an exciting match for John Book, I think, Paul. Did you manage to catch any of it? Uh, not much, but um, I did manage to see the sort of second half, most of the second half. But I think this is, you know, like, like you said, this was third versus second, but it bodes very, very well for John Book to be able to try and make that ground up. They have a lot of games in hand, as you know, over Ulsan. If they win them all, they should go top. But more so is the fact that they ha- now have Moon Son Min back. We know how good he can be. And Song Min Gyu as well. So two attacking reinforcements there. It's, yes. It definitely bodes well for the, the, the last stretch of the season in terms of John Book getting back top of the league and retaining their title. Certainly, this is the time of the season where they do tend to start turning things on. I had caught John Book a couple of days earlier when they had played 2-1 FC and uh, they lost 1-0 in that match. It was a very conservative performance uh, in that match. They were very reserved in their tactics. They were, were playing two defensive midfielders in front of a back four against Su one to just try and stop them. And uh, in the end, they couldn't, which, you know, says a lot about Su one FC and the form they're in, but more about them later. But this was more convincing from John Book. It was a far younger lineup. We had Peck Sung Ho in the centre of the park with E Sung Gi and Takehiro Kunimoto. While on the left, we had Son Min Kyu, we had Min Son Min on the right. This was more of a dynamic midfield, more attacking side than that we're we kind of used to seeing from John Book in previous seasons. Um, and I think as well, what we've noticed with John Book this year is they tend to be rotating all the time. And I don't know whether rotation has foiled them partly this year. They have got the players. They've got to make sure all these players get game time. And in theory, you know, this should help them in the long term with this compact schedule because they can rotate. But I don't feel they've managed to find a consistent team selection for a few games and I think if they could do that it could really reap rewards but on the positives Song Min Kyu he started after making his uh, controversial move from Poang Steelers uh, he did co- was coming into this with a, a slight knock and uh, he did look promising being involved in a number of John Book's attacks he did actually end up getting stretched off though Paul which doesn't bode well uh, there's no real word on the, the extent of his injury at the moment though so um, hopefully only just a knock Mm. Yeah, let's hope so. But yeah, Gustavo, he scored. It was a penalty. It was a from the penalty spot. It was slightly harsh, to be honest. Uh, Daegu's Injin Young was deemed the offended, deemed to handle Isungi's attempted cross. But both players were outside of the box. But on VAR review, Injin Young's hand was on the penalty 
box line really really harsh to concede i saw quite a lot of people getting upset about that on twitter understandably so but the second goal mince on min's goal it was a john book of old if you like it was great attacking counter-attacking play it was incisive it came started right at the back with kim min hyok and worked its way up the pitch and brilliant uh pass in from gustavo and uh, min Sun min slotted it away coolly calmly as we'd seen in those uh in in that 2019 season when he was in form for john book and he was a threat all night he missed some other chances to double his score. Dega did get a goal back in the end. Great header from Edgar at the back post. And uh, finally, we got to see Sasalak, although only for five minutes, unfortunately, because he came on to replace Son Min Kyu. Hopefully, we get to see more of him midweek. But good result from John Buck overall. Unfortunate for Daegu, perhaps, but um, a, a good opening match of the weekend. Perhaps not so entertaining, however, was one of the other matches taking place, and that was over in Suwon. That was Suwon Samsung uh, playing host to Jeju. Paul? Yes, this was... Uh, he, he didn't miss much if he didn't watch this one. It was. Um, it's now four games without a win for Suwon as well, and just two goals scored in that time, so that kind of suggests what their problems have been since the break, because they had a lot of momentum before mm-hmm. the uh, ACL force break, but they've found it a bit difficult since. At the back, though, they will have Doniel Henry. He is back in Korea after his exploits in the Gold Cup with Canada. They obviously made it to the s- semis, and he played both games for, for them. But he's back. I've seen him on Instagram. In, he's back in training. Kim Gunning as well, their striker, so obviously trying to address their issues up front. He should be returning soon. I'm going to check that because I haven't seen any updates soon. Uh, recently about his injury hopefully soon but i suppose the headline really the the sort of the biggest positive was that guan chang un made his return to suwon mm-hmm. um he is obviously he's come back to, to to the k league to do his military service he was rather hoping to get a medal at the olympics so he didn't have to i'm sure um so it now basically means that guan chang un will be in k league for the next two years in, including his time between now and the end of the season with suwon blue wings he'll obviously i'm sure going to gimchon next year Maybe in K League One, um, hopefully not from my point of view. <laughs> but um, but there but there we go. But yeah, Suwon. I mean, Pakun Ha has, has has proved to be a very good manager. And this since he took over at the end of well midway through last year, almost around a year ago, this blip has, has been very uncharacteristic from them. They they've never had this kind of run before where they've lost three and drawn one and been without a win in four. So hopefully for Suwon fans, they 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 do get back on track soon. Well, one team that did get back on track with their returning players it was uh, Ulsan Hyundai, league leaders Ulsan Hyundai, who uh, defeated Gangwon 2-1 in, down in Ulsan. But it wasn't as straightforward as it seemed. Both Olympians, Lee Dong-gyong and Lee Dong-jun on the score sheet, and that follows Lee Dong-jun scoring a few days prior as well. Um, so things looking good for Ulsan at the moment, Paul. Yeah, and I'm particularly impressed with those two as well, the two goal scorers, Lee Dong-gyong, we talked about him last week, and obviously we talked about how that there was some doubts about his place in the squad at Ulsan, but he's definitely showing now that he he is worthy of a place in that team, scoring fairly regularly. Mm-hmm. He's, he's uh, producing the goods, and Lee Dong Jun, wow, I, I I really enjoy watching him play. You know, he's got such good pace, but he's not all about pace. He he he, he can finish as well, um, and the goal which proved to be, to be the winner. It came two minutes after Cho Jae Wan had equalised for Gangwon. Yeah. So there was good character from Ulsan to be able to sort of put that set back to one side. They conceded fairly late, but they still managed to go and find a winner. The ball wouldn't quite bounce for Lee Dong Jun, and he, he had to sort of turn around the opposite way almost and find a way through. But the goalkeeper, it was fired straight at him. Didn't really have a, didn't really have much time to to see it. So I think more of the uh, the power of the shot had taken that one through, but it was ingenuity from In- I- I Dong Jun, and uh, he, his his good goal scoring form continues. And Ulsan, a big big win. They, they obviously had to win that one mm-hmm. um, to make sure that they, although they they, they are going to be top because of the games in hand that other teams have still got to got to play, but because John Book won, they had to yeah. they had to make sure that they did the very very least and match John Book's results. So a big result for them, and obviously they've. Uh, got themselves back on track like you said yeah because all I, I feel that they probably could have killed the game off a little bit earlier there's some scorable chances but yeah they're, they're not going to be <laughs> there don't be too many complaints of that and yeah as you said Edong Jun's goal really um yeah I think of beauty and he's he's been doing really well um both for Korea and uh well for Ulsan as well it seems anyway elsewhere at the weekend 
Ulsan's East Coast neighbours, they travelled up to Tanshan to face Songnam. It finished Songnam 1, Pohang nil. Not the most entertaining of matches, but a goal from Mulic in the 10th minute. Um, it proved for a very important result for Songnam. Oh, yeah, because that was the first win in 11, 12 mm-hmm. in all competitions. They they were buoyed, I think, in the early part of the season by Mulic. His, his goal-scoring exploits had them sort of fairly comfortably, you know, on the cusp of the top six. And he's now scored 47% of all their goals. He has nine for the season. Songnam have 19 in total. That's the same as FC Seoul as, as the, the fewest in K-League 1. So that just shows how important that he is. So he got his 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 goal, the all-important winning goal. And now with Guangzhou losing to Seoul, which we'll come to next, that's a very, very big win for Songnam. And you would think that they do have the quality. I look at Songnam's squad and I think they've got enough to avoid the drop. Guang Gong Wan, as we talked about last week, the centre-back, that's another clean sheet for them as well, obviously, mm-hmm. since he's come back in. So you'd think that they've got a bit more than Guangzhou, certainly, to be able to avoid the drop. And yeah, big win, big three points for Songnam. For, for Pohang, a bit disappointing from them, to be honest. They've, they've not had the best of uh, best of form of late. They've, they've sort of inconsistent. Won one, lost one, drawn one, won one, lost one. They can't really find consistency. And, you know, this is this kind of, Result wasn't what they needed. They you know, after the sort of ne- negativity surrounding this transfer of Song Mingyu, they they didn't need this kind of result losing a- against a team that's at the wrong end of the table. So we'll see how they respond at, at the weekend. Indeed, and as you mentioned, uh, FC Seoul similar number of goals scored to Song Nam, and uh, also scoring in around the same time. Ji Dong won with a ninth minute goal. Uh, proving to be the winner, Paul. Yeah, that was his first goal since returning to K-League. First, I believe, since June 2011. First goal in K-League, that is. That was, I think, I think he mm-hmm. scored against Incheon in June that, that, that year. But yes, it was um, a very good goal in the way that he earned it. He attacked the space. This is what Osmar said to me on Twitter when I, when I was... I wasn't quite sure who got the final touch in that one. The, the angles in the replay didn't really help me much either. Um but yeah, Osmar said, you know, the way that he he anticipated the, the way the defender was going to move and a smooth touch, and yeah, he got in from a, a bit of a tight angle, but managed to squeeze the ball in. So a big goal for him. Obviously, you know, huge for his conference. When you join a new club and you're a striker, you want to get a goal as soon as possible. So that's that's good for him because that was in his first start. And obviously, Seoul they are at the wrong end of the table. They, they, they do have some games in hand, but um, they're not guaranteed. And they've got John Book next, so yeah. not ideal, really. But Seoul, glass half full, looking at it unbeaten in three mm-hmm. with two wins and a draw, just one defeat in five. They've got Chapman ready soon. He told me he's a couple of weeks away, and that was before the Ulsan game. So maybe maybe for the weekend, perhaps not a way to John Book. Might be um, saving for the next home game, perhaps. But uh, that will be good timing because, because Kim Won-Gun, went off with a thigh problem early in that game. So if he is available, then that will be good good timing. But for Guangzhou, they are cut adrift a bit now. Three points away from 11th is not too bad, but five from absolute safety. Jonathan will have to be their, their, their saviour, as that was their 14th loss of the season. Yeah, whenever he comes, that is. He is yeah. still dealing with a fitness issue. He's still not really looking likely to be facing John Buck midweek. Perhaps at the weekend, uh, we might see him finally make an appearance, probably from the bench. They need goals. And uh, Jonathan was very capable of scoring them last time he was in the K-League. It'll be interesting to see whether when he finally returns, he can uh, be the next Felipe or will he end up the next Niall McGinn? Anyway... <laughs> <laughs> Final. Yeah. Sp- speaking of no goals scored, uh, yeah, two two of the league's informed sides, Incheon United, Sioux on FC, headed by two of the league's informed strikers in Lars Veldwijk and Stefan Magosa, and also a battle of last week's two interviewees. You should go back and listen to that episode. Finishing Sunday night, finishing all the weekend's action, finish nil nil. Uh, <laughs> it's typical. Oh, yeah, you could have scripted it. You could have seen it coming a mile off. Uh, there's so much build-up between these two teams because they've been playing some great football. And I think 
there was still some positives to take from this. I think Incheon, they were restricted by Suwon FC. Uh, they were restricted to many shots from outside the box. Um, Suwon, they reverted to their five-man back line, went out of possession. And um, yeah, they, they, there was also several chances for Lars. There was a bit of promise for Tardelli when he came on. He was the one who scored the winner against John Book a few days before. He's very good at just nipping in and getting a shot away. So the and yeah, nil-nil. It, I think both teams won't really mind that result given their positions in the table. Um, but could it have been better? Possibly, yeah. But like you said, they probably happy just to sort of pick up a point. Mm. But certainly Sue and away from home. Incheon, now they're on to 30 points already and beating him five with three wins. And that's eight overall with four wins. So is this the real Chosung one? I know... Um, Branko, if he's listening to this, will be smashing his phone if he hears me say that. But um, I think this, I said it at the, in the last season as, as well, obviously after he guided uh, Inchon to be the greatest of great escapes. But I think that was a bigger and greater achievement than what he did by finishing second with Jeju in 2017. Mm-hmm. He's doing an excellent job at Inchon. He's doing a very, very good job, not just because of what happened last year, saving them from... from what looked like certain relegation, but it's also the way that he's got them very comfortable in mid-table and knocking on the door for the top six, it's not impossible. You know, you look yeah. at you look at teams like Pohang, that they aren't consistent enough in trying to put together runs. So of Sue and FC, they both got a, a huge chance mm-hmm. of making it into the top six before the split. Indeed, as we always say, there's no party like a K1 party. K2 is old hat. Uh, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, that wraps it up for the K-League 1. We're going to have a quick break and then we're going to delve into the mailbag. Don't go anywhere. Uji Lewis is your neighbourhood British bar and cafe located in the old Giro district of Seoul. Decorated in old English antiques and furniture for a true homely feel, you can enjoy homemade scones, cakes and afternoon tea during the day, and traditional British favourites like beef stew, English ale and a fine selection of wines at night. Available for private parties or simply an evening out, Old G. Lewis is sure to become your favourite neighbourhood pub. Be sure to mention Kayleigh United at the bar during your visit and you'll get 10% off your bill. Hello and welcome back to the Kayleigh United podcast. I'm Matthew Bins and uh, joining me in the Old G. Lewis mailbag is Paul Neat. Paul. Yes, indeed. Let's have a look in the mailbag. So we've got Sue on FC fan on Twitter. So, uh, he says, hi, thanks for always answering me. Well, thanks for sending in lots of questions. Um, he says, do you know if Nasangun Sue and FC has an injury or something mm. or something happened to him? He hasn't played since round 16 and he's not even on the bench. I think it would be a good option if the coach decides to change the formation during the game. Well, yeah. yes, I don't know. I have to have a look at that one for you. Um, I'm not really too sure. I'm not sure if you've checked, Matthew. I have checked, yeah. He is nice. uh, not injured. <laughs> There's okay. been no reports of him injured, and he hasn't been featuring any injury uh, tables uh, that we put out. We put out injury tables uh, every week, every Friday, for our so rare, uh, for our Patreon followers, uh, those who follow us for so rare mainly, but we put out an uh, injury news update Uh, He's not been featuring in them. So that would suggest to me that it is a decision by the manager not to include him. Perhaps it's just unreported. There are, despite our best of scouring all the news, sometimes these things, they just don't come out. Uh, This is Korean football and injury news is rare. But yet no reports of an injury on him. It just seems that he's not been included in the squad. Yeah. Okay. We also have a question from Brunillionaire on Twitter as well. Hey, lads, just a general Kaylee question. How do Kaylee teams culturally integrate new signings? Are new signings required to take Korean classes? Thank you. It depends very much on the club, which seems like, uh, the yeah, seems like a bit of a cop out of an answer, but it really does. Uh, there, when uh, the full interview of uh, Ryan Edwards comes out. You can listen to how he's been learning Korean as well. He uh, even even goes as far as to introduce himself in Korean, which um, I, I, I still struggle to do, despite my best efforts to study. Um, but yeah, <laughs> it, it really depends. We, we've seen some clubs where players find it notoriously difficult to settle. Um, I think 
Yeah, sorry, yeah, it just depends. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna save this question for a future mailbag and ask a player. I'm gonna I might ask um another foreign player to see what they do because I don't think Korean classes are needed at all. No, um they they supply but, them usually if requested. Yeah. Um I think it's entirely optional. They often have a, an interpreter anyway. I know Lars Veldovic, for example, he seems to go everywhere with his interpreter. Um doesn't buy his Instagram he's, anyway. He's, he's, if he's stalking his brunch cafes again, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> he's very active on his Instagram story. Um, yeah, I might have to ask a couple of players and see see what happens because I would like to know if if they do like initiation song or something like you sometimes see in um, you know in 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 European teams where they have to sort of stand up in, in, in on a chair and and sing a song. I haven't seen anything well, like that put on social media, so maybe they don't. But you know, it'd be nice to see if, if, it, what what they do do. In John Book, I know that they always have, uh, and I know most clubs have it, kind of like have an opening you know, opening season ceremony where they'll have the fans in, and not anymore, obviously, at the moment due to COVID, yeah. but they'd have the youngsters, the rookies who've been promoted to the youth team, they'd have to do some kind of stupid dance. Maybe the foreigners have to play some Korean game with some broken Korean or something. Uh, usually with most clubs as well, the foreign players are usually, they live quite close to each other, um, and they're usually... Um, they're usually not very close to the Korean players. A lot, of, some clubs still have dormitories. John Book, for example, has a clubhouse. Most, uh, nearly all their Korean players stay in the clubhouse during the week. Not necessarily all the foreign players do. I think they can have the option to if they want. But usually, the foreign players are given an apartment in the city um, nearby. I know Seoul Eland, they have apartments on the edge of Seoul as well for their foreign players. And uh, I think the manager and coach, some of the coaching staff, lives over there as well. But yeah, the, the actual players themselves mixing with the Korean players, it, it yeah, it will depend on the club. But yeah, definitely it's something we should be asking future players. All right, well, that is it from the mailbag this week. So just a bit of housekeeping to do. Obviously, we are on Patreon, as Matthew just mentioned. We have so rare features. So we for K-League, two champion tier subscribers, that's from $5. We have some so rare exclusives, weekly team news, including injuries, suspensions, transfer rumors, and much more. But from the K1 champion tier and above, that's $10. Weekly predictions of starting lineups. And we also have a brand new customized player scouting feature. Once a month, we'll do a deep dive on a player of your choosing and send you a customized PDF scouting report. So that obviously also gets you all access to all our other stuff on there as well. Videos of, our, of the full interviews we do with players and whatnot, podcast extras. We do have tiers as low as $1 and $3. You can get some early access to articles and even some exclusives as well. And if you want to listen to us live, you can do that uh, on Thursday on Football Nation Radio. Uh, you can also subscribe to this podcast via iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, TuneIn Radio and more. Leave a review and you'll get entered into this month's Kaylee Kit Contest. But uh, from myself, Matthew Bins and Paul Neat, Paul, 400 appearances, Chay Chul Soon. See you soon. <laughs> Come on, come on, come on,